Hi, come on in. Come on, come on in and set a spell with me. It's, I don't know what day it is. <laughs> I don't know. It's the middle of the week sometime. And I have a Zemo bag with a little bit of extra outside the Timo bag. It's so good to see you again. Thanks for coming back. I really appreciate it. And if you are new here, hi, I'm Connie, and this is Connie's Little Corner. Yes, I'm on the floor. Guys, I am absolutely exhausted. At the end of the video, I'll fill you in on what's going on around the corner. But if you are new, please go down below so you can grab my link. You can download the Timu app and my code right up here, AFC95851. Those two things combined will get you a $100 coupon bundle for future purchases, 30% off your first order, and a whole bunch of freebies. So obviously it's not Sunday. Mama's not here. But I wanted to get some of my orders that were outstanding. I wanted to get them out from under the floor because of what's going on around the corner this week. Uh, yeah, my hair is down. I am fresh out of the shower, even though it's midday. I did so much this morning that I just needed to take a shower. So I figured, well, I'm fresh and clean. Let's do a video. <laughs> okay, you ready? Little mix of stuff. Got a little bit of everything. $1.98 for this. Now, keep in mind, my orders are free. I don't pay for anything. And these are the prices that were attached to these items at the time I ordered them. If you want to know why I don't pay for things, send me an email, connieslittlecorner at gmail.com, and I will let you know how you can start getting free things, free orders, and more from Timu, as opposed to just being a shopper. So for $1.98, I got an egg case. This holds half a dozen eggs. This is for camping. I do intend to use this on our trip at the end of the month. It closes up nice, secure. It snaps closed very securely. It's harder plastic. It is plastic, but it's harder plastic. It's not going to crush. Um, yeah, it closes so secure it's hard to open. <laughs> so you have to be careful when you open it that your eggs don't go flying. But I do like this. In the bottom of it, it has these three little spokes. I don't know if you can see them sticking up. Can you see those three little knobbies sticking up in the bottom of these things? Those give extra support to keep the egg up off the bottom. And because it closes so tightly, they're not going to move around. So for $1.98, I can protect my eggs and have a much smaller container. The cardboard containers they come in, or if you get them in foam, that doesn't protect them from crushing. This will. Camping stuff. Okay, $2.82. This is a pack of two. I hope you're all having a really good week. I'm having a crazy week. Wait till you hear everything that's been going on. Pack of two of these. Just toss it right up into my camping pile behind me because this is what they're for. These are suction cup hooks. These come with built-in carabiners. That come in nice and tightly. All right. This is attached. You can unscrew it here if you want to remove this and just hook something directly onto the bar where this is mounted. So you have two options for that. It has a very tight lever suction cup. So when you have this down, your suction cup is out. Now watch the cup pull in. The minute I pull this up, it sucks the, the center in. You get that, see? Can you see how it's indent? It sucks it tight. This is for my rain tarp or my sunshade, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to call it a both. Because <laughs> once I put it up, it'll keep the hot sun off of the top of Levi and I during the day while we're not in the tent. And if it happens to rain, it'll keep the rain off us. So this sucks down onto the roof of my car or onto the back window you can if you had depending on what your vehicle is i suck it down to the metal on the side of the car just to the sides of the roof rack i suck this down i tie my camping cords onto this 
and or another, I, I don't have to use anything necessarily if I don't want to. I can use another carabiner, but because this is a carabiner in itself, I just hook this on to the rivet in the tarp. And I, whoops, I just dropped the knob off the end of it. Um, and then I suspend it. At the far end of the tarp, the other two holes, I use poles. And those poles hold it up. So let me put this back in the bag here so I don't lose anything. You know me losing little parts. I don't need to be losing any little parts. So I got a set of two of these. I couldn't find the ones that I had from years ago. And I figured for the price, I would get two more, $2.82. They do come in two packs, four packs, and six packs, I believe. And I think some vendors actually sell like eight of them. But for my purposes, I only need two to attach to the car. And the thing is, too, I can, if I'm parked sideways, I can attach this to the side of the car so that I can open the door to the car and go in and out under a tarp, which is probably what I'll do. Possibly? Probably? I don't know. We'll find out. All right. What else is in here? There's a whole bunch of stuff in this bag. A dollar ninety-eight. Oh, I should save this for the mama, but I'm going to show it to you now. This is for her. Mama gets messy. And Murphy's Law, if you have a white blouse on, you're going to get something on it, right? Well, mom's last name should be changed to Murphy. So she uses this in the assisted living home where she is. So I got her one. It's an adult food catcher. I hate the word bib. When you're dealing with an adult, yes, I know it's a giant bib. But to me, it's a clothing protector. It's a food catcher. So I got it in bright red. Of course, you know, that's my favorite color and mom's second favorite color. Velcro closing, which is very adjustable. This is really nice material, too. This is like a terry cloth. Look at this. This is like a terry cloth. This is not super thin. Nice stitching on the edges. Nice, generous neck hole so that it's not going to choke anybody. Yeah, really happy with that. And for $1.98, you can't beat the price. So that's for Mama. She'll see it when I pick her up on Sunday. Um, if all goes well the rest of this week, I'll pick her up on Sunday. <laughs> so anyway, she'll have that. Okay, let's see what else we got. Oh. There's a big thing in this bag that's blocking everything else in the bag. So you hold on. Let me get that out of the way. Here we go. All right. $2.85. Now, this skinny little thing, this is a set of three bowls. I kid you not, three bowls. They have these in other colors, but you know what? I didn't care about the color. I got them for camping. It's all about the convenience and saving space. So here's your three bowls. Your large top, which is about seven, almost eight inches. That's your large top. Your medium top. And these lids do snap on nice and tight. And here's your three bowls. Here's your little baby bowl, here's your middle bowl, and here's your larger bowl. Okay, baby bowl coming up. Take the lid off it before you try to expand it and make sure the lid's off it before you try to close it. Just like anything else, grab it by the edges, just push. There's your little bowl. And the lid does seal nice and tight. I've tested all of these. The lids stay on. Perfect little size. It's about four inches, about four inches on the top and maybe two and a half, three inches on the bottom. So it's perfect for a little bit of leftovers. Collapses just as easy. Close it right back up. Medium size bowl. Look at how thin that folds. That's like an inch. Grab the rim, push with your thumbs and pop it out. And there's your medium bowl. This is about five inches across, five and a half inches across, about four inches on the bottom, about three inches deep. There's your medium bowl with your medium lid. 
Goes on very nicely, nice and snug. Really like these. I was very pleased with the quality of these. Close is easy. Push it right back together. And I love the way they stack. The little guy fits like right in there. And then you just put your two big lids on the bottom after you get the big one. Now, here's the big bowl. There you go. This is about eight inches across on the top, roughly five and a half inches on the bottom, three and a half inches or so deep. All the measurements will be down below. I'll put all the descriptions, the links, the prices. And um, when you click on the link, you'll see all the measurements, the exact measurements. So I'm just ballparking it for you. But this is really nice material. All right. This is very thick. It's a soft, rubbery type material. Um, I don't know how well. Now, I have one bowl that's collapsible that's probably 10, 15 years old. And it has not broken where it folds. It hasn't gotten so weak that it's broken. I don't know if these will do that or not, how long they'll last. But I'm going to find out because I'm going to use them. These are for camping, right? This one. Levi's water bowl. I have another one that's going to be Levi's food bowl. So he'll have designated bowls for whatever he needs. Put them back together. Like that. Ah, it's stuck. Just stack the lids on top or on the bottom, whichever way you want. You can put them on the top, you can put them on the bottom. I had them sitting. Whoops, hold on. I had them sitting this way. That's all the room they take. That's it. That's less than two inches of space that these are going to take. Definitely worth it, whether you're camping or whether you uh, live in a small house. You need bowls, but you don't want to have a lot of space for storage. Get the collapsibles. I love the collapsibles. I can't wait to start using them. Okay, what else we got in here? A dollar seventy-five. Oh, a dollar seventy-five. Okay, this is a windbreak. You all saw my camping stove, and I'll put a picture up there so that you can see what it looks like. It has the square edge around it where the little grid sits that comes with it that so sits above the flame. These four pieces, and no, they're not blue. They got all that nice little plastic on them. I think if I can get one up, oh, they're stuck together. Hold on. This is a windbreak. So with a windbreak, all you really have to do is you slide these together to make a square. There's four of them, obviously. And you just slide. There's little hooks in here. And you have your hook here. So all you do, see how it has the slit in it to go up on there. So all you do is slide that up into there. It's hard to do one-handed. And then the last one you slide up into there. And that simply, you have a windbreak. You set this down around the flame area and it stops the drafts from coming right up against where your jets are coming out. It's pretty sturdy. It is stainless steel. It's not going to rust. Um, yes, you do have to pull this blue plastic off before you use it. But as you can see, I didn't have to pull the plastic off before demonstrating how it works. So that's what they look like without the blue plastic on it. Really easy to assemble. Just as easy to disassemble. You simply just pop it apart, stack the pieces together. Throw it into your camping kitchen gear bag, and you're done. That's it. No space, but it gives you everything you need. Pretty cool, huh? This will work for most of those little camp stoves, um, the ones like what I have gotten. I think it's called Vivacrete. Viv Vivacrete. Um, so this will work well on any of those. And for the price, you can't go wrong. You know, $1.75 for a windbreak. That's a deal. I like that. That's a deal. Okay. I know we have more in here. Hold on. 
Let me make sure this bag feels heavy. No, nope, it's empty. Okay. $3.89. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm not getting any younger. And the time I spend with mom and the reality of the closeness of her mortality, shall we say, it's made me think about my own. And as organized as I am, um, oddly enough, I had never done anything like this before. I'm trying to rip this open without doing any more damage to what I've already damaged myself. It says, sorry, it's your problem because I'm dead. End of life planner. Now, I have named him an executor. She's one of my besties. She's in New York. She knows who she is, so I don't need to say her name. Uh, I don't have her permission to identify her, so I'm not going to. This is an amazing little book. It's got a nice kind of like vinyl cover, so the cover won't get all warped and whatnot. I like the sense of humor because, you know, that's me. I'd, I'd put on there, sorry, something like, sorry, you're effed because I'm dead and now you have to handle everything. Um, but I'm going to fill out this book and I'm going to send it to her. So, <laughs> we're not going to say the first word. I'm dead. Now what? Okay. End of life planner and journal is what it says. And as you go through it, a complete guide to my wishes, my belongings, and other material, other matters. Written by, it gives you where you can put your name, you can sign it. Um, it's not a legally binding document, but this is a great thing for your executor to have to go along with your will. You don't need a living trust unless you have a lot of funds and things that you're sending to somebody. So don't let anybody talk you into paying for a living trust. A regular will is fine. Um, I don't have any kids other than mom. I don't have any family. So there's nobody going to be hopefully protesting or even probably knowing that I pass other than my executor and you guys. You might miss me. So it says before you read this journal, and these are all kind of like notes that you can put in here that you can put your own personal thoughts down and things that you want to say uh, to the person that's going to be getting this book. Personal records, your legal name, nicknames, it gives you all your PHI information, uh, your social status, everything that's necessary about you personally, okay? And then it goes on, and we're not going to go through the whole book, but I'll give you a rough idea. Data and documents is a section. So like if you have an attorney, important contact information, it doesn't necessarily have to be an attorney, but there's several pages in here for attorneys doctors, relatives, um, let me see who else. There's a lot in there for relatives, friends, to give you a section for, for friends, and then others, like if you have insurance agents or somebody that, other people that need to be contacted upon your passing. And then it says device login information. Now that's important because obviously I'm a computer person and I'm going to be leaving my laptop and my cell phone behind. So my executor needs to know how to get into those devices. So device logon, online account information. Uh, in other words, all the accounts that I may still have online where like I, I shop, you know, Timu, et cetera. I have to put that information here so she can access that and handle those accounts important documents. It could be anything from insurance papers, life insurance, medical coverage, burial papers. Um, and then it gets into a separate section for insurance information. And I want to show you this because I think this is important. Um, it gives you section for life insurance. It gives you sections for car insurance. If you're still driving, which I am, it gives you health insurance and then other insurance. Now, other insurance might be homeowners insurance, tenants insurance, uh, insurance on your valuables, insurance on your pets, your surviving pets, right? Then in here is your will information. And this is the part that I really liked because once I fill this out, then it's very easy for me to take the will document and update everything. So here's my will information. Where's my will located? Um, 
The family trust is located, power of attorney, the advanced directive. In other words, where are all the documents? And then additional instructions for your will. So if you want there to be a reading of the will, who do you want to have present? Um, if you want somebody else to help your executor, who do you want? Are there any codicils or any attachments to your will? Where are those documents? And that's something that you want to make sure you keep those documents with this um, in a nice little case. Financial information, bank accounts and credit card information. It gives you lots of pages for those. Investment accounts, retirement accounts, outstanding loans. Like if you have a mortgage or a car loan, uh, safe deposit boxes, current bills. You can actually list out, these are your monthly bills. Who's the company that you owe it to? How much? What's the due date? What's it for? So that your executor knows who to contact when your bills aren't getting paid because you're dead. I'm dead. We're talking about me, right? <laughs> so current bills, whether you're paying them or not, the creditors that you owe. And there's lots of pages for that. And then utilities information. Power companies have to be contacted. And then other financial information. You have people that owe you money. Are you getting money sent to you? Are you earning a dividend or something along those lines? Um, that that has that person has to be reached or has to be. So there's a lot of things to think of. And then, of course, there is my properties. There's a section here, and it's called property information. So my properties. And this, when it says my properties, it refers to physical residences. All right. In other words, your homes, your vacation home, maybe an RV because that's considered a property. Um, and then vehicle information is listed in here. So you can put the And then other property owned. Other property is where you can list your valuables. In other words, um, do you have a collection of dolls or do you have a ceramic collection or do you have... Uh, your grandmother's collection of cut glass crystal ware. So that's your other property that you list and then you list what to do with it. All this helps you create your will. And then my end of life care plan is important because some of us will pass in a light switch moment, meaning that one minute we'll be here, we'll go to sleep or whatever, and the next minute we'll be gone and we won't know until we go that we've gone. And trust me, you will know once you're gone. <laughs> there is life on the other side. I contact them all the time. Um, my end of life wishes, all right? It says, these are the people I want making medical decisions for me if I'm not able to make them for myself. So this is kind of like, um, it's not it's not a healthcare proxy. It's It's by no means a legal document. But these are your wishes in your handwriting, all right, that you're going to do. And it's for this person, for example, my executor or my healthcare proxy, uh, who they're both in New York, so that they know if, if I'm dying of cancer, these are my wishes and they will follow my wishes. This is what I have documented. So end of life wishes, it covers a lot of things. And then other information, you can write specifics, you can send messages or notes and, and make it as personal as you want, direct it to the person. But it is important that I should have done this, well, I did do it a while ago. I've had a healthcare proxy for quite some time, even before I left um, New York. And I've had my assigned executor for quite some time as well. And these are the two people I trust most in my life with everything about my life. Um, and they are the most respectful people that I have ever met in my life. So I have a third person, but I don't know how willing he might be, but we'll see. But I'm good with who I have, with the ladies I have now. So other information for end-of-life witnesses, witnesses, wishes, um, additional wish wishes and notes. You've got lots of room in here to cover everything. I'm showing this to you because you know what? They don't show you this on the website. They don't show you what the inside of this thing looks like. And they do have a photo image, but it's so small you can't even see it. And then my wishes for my spouse or significant other. I don't have a spouse or significant other, but I don't know if I will when my time comes. My wishes for my children, if you have children. I don't. 
my wishes for my relatives. Okay. This is where like, I want to give this to this person or that to that person, or that's my wishes for them. My wishes for my friends. What do I want to leave or give uh, to my friends? What do I want to leave or give to my executor or what, she, what she's going to have to be doing for me? My wishes for my pets. This is an important one. All right. Because I will always have pets and my pets very likely will outlive me unless I'm very lucky. So wishes for my pets is important. Who do they go to? Who takes care of them? Are their funds set aside to take care of them? Will I be paying for their care? Are they so old that maybe I shouldn't rehome them and should just have them euthanized um, and not put them through some sort of a transition at the end of their life? So it also gives you other wishes and requests than my letters. And my letters is basically where you can write, it says a letter to, and there's a lot of pages for my letters. You can write to as many people as you want, um, and your executor will be responsible to get those letters to those people. So you put their name, their addresses, their phone numbers, their emails, whatever you have. And then you can write a personal what I call a departure letter, things you want to say to that person at the time of your departure um, or once you've departed so that these pages will get ripped out. Your um, executor or executrix, whichever, will send these letters to that person or they can photograph them and send them to that person and keep it in your book or they can carbon copy it, but keep the original in the book. And then my apologies, what in your life or to whom in your life did you want to express an apology to? And it's just blank pages. You can apologize to yourself. I'm sorry I didn't take better care of myself. I'm sorry I maybe I didn't make better choices in my life. Whatever it is that you want to unburden and get off your chest. And then recommendations for my funeral. I'm not having a funeral. Fry me and toss me. That's it. I'm an omelet. I was cracked on a rock and raised by the sun. Toast me, roast me, and send me off into the wind because you know what? That's me. I don't want to be stuck in the ground. That's My body is not who I am. My soul and my spirit will depart this shell when I pass. And I can say that very candidly because I know this. You know, I've been a psychic knower and a... Uh, a psychic reader and I communicate with those that have passed and I can see future events, not my own. I'm not allowed to do that. Spirit doesn't show me that, but I've helped a lot of people. And some of you out there know I've done readings for you and you know that my gifts that I was giving, my talents that I was giving, I've never charged anybody a dime for it. So my last words are going to be like, pay up. You know, see, I told you there was life after death. I'm coming back to haunt you. Um, but we all will be back. We all live several lives. So this book has everything. And if you don't know where to put it, then just put it in the notes section or put it on a separate piece of paper. And then after you've gone through the book a couple of times and gotten familiar with the sections, put little stickies. My plan is I'm going to put little sticky notes in each section of the types of things that I'm going to record in that section. And this I'm going to take with me camping because it's going to be very quiet. I'm going to have a lot of time alone with me and Levi and my thoughts. And I'm going to be able to get this on paper so that I don't have to pack this up when the house is sold. It will already be in the hands of my executor. So great little thing, great little item. Um, by all means, get one. You know, they have all different styles, but I just got the basic plain one. Okay, on to something more cheery. Actually, I thought that was kind of cheery because I feel good knowing that I will have one place, that book, that will have everything my executor needs everything in one spot. How much more organized could I get than that? And you all know me and my organization, right? Okay. This was a value of $8.55. Nice little drawstring nylon waterproof bag. And in it, we have a table, a 15 inch round table. This is 
really hard plastic. I like that it has the holes around it because it will drain. If anything spills on the table, it'll drain off. It'll be easy to wash off. It has three legs that go in the bottom of this. This is my little camping table. Are you ready for this? If I can get them open. It comes with six legs because you can make it two different heights. So if I put the first set in, and I'm going to put the first, there, there's three legs that have rubber stoppers on the bottom. See those? So that if you put them down on a tarp, they're not going to slip. Or if you put them down on the ground, they're going to be sturdy. So these are going to be your bottom legs no matter what, right? So this is the first size. And then it has your coupling on the other end in case you want to make the table bigger. There's your coupling. Now, I'm going to start with the end that doesn't have the coupling. It simply goes in the table. And they go in tight. And I just dropped them. Where did they go? <laughs> All right. And there you go. And in there you go. All right. So this is the first height. This is your short little nightstand table. This will bring this table up about a foot from the ground. And these are metal. I don't know if you can hear this. The legs are metal. They're not plastic. Now, on the bottom... It's where you take your coupling in if you want this to be higher. So if I'm in the tent, I take off the legs, sit this down, and this is at floor level next to my air mattress, which should be here in a couple of days because it's in California. Yay! So this is the perfect bedside height. Or if I'm sitting on the ground outside with Levi, I want to raise it. I simply attach the coupling to the bottoms, and they literally... You have to twist these on. These are pretty, whoa, <laughs> pretty tight. Let's put that one back up in there. And the last one. And now you've got a table, three-legged table, that sits 24 inches up from the ground. 24 inches high. So this will sit next to my umbrella chair when I'm sitting outside by the fire and I want to have my coffee or my beverage or my breakfast, there we go. And at night, if I want to take it inside with me, I can just take off the bottom three legs. When I'm ready to put this thing away, I simply just pop the legs out, separate them. It's hard to do it when you have all three in your hand. Separate them down. And these are tight. Drop them back in the bag, right? Take my little table, wipe it down, and put the whole thing back in the bag. And because this is completely flat, it will fit in here. It's going right in that bag. Everything is going in this bag. Can you tell the bag is getting a little fuller, right? It's got almost everything in it that I could need. All right, let's see what else we got here. Hold on. We still have more. Okay. Oh, that's a half order. I'm not going to do the half order today. The last item in this order are tent poles. Now, I told you in the beginning where I had gotten those suction cups. They're going to hold one end of my rain tarp or my sun tarp. And the other end is the tent poles. $7.22 total for these. And this is a great set. Really nice, nice bag. Okay, good quality bag. This bag is going to last for years. And it's a drawstring bag. Pull these puppies out. Okay. So it automatically came with Two rolls of black nylon cording, which is a bonus. That's why I got this one, because a lot of them just come with the bag and the poles. This one came with two rolls, which means I have, and I believe each of these rolls is 10 or 12 feet, maybe more. Um, I'd have to go back and look at it. But it's definitely enough to tie to the top of the poles down to the ground. 
Okay. Now. Hold on a second here. These kind of poles don't have ten stakes, but that's all right because I have I have plenty of spare. My hair is driving me nuts when it dries like that. I have plenty of stakes. So these poles on the bottoms, let me find the bottom pieces. All right. They have the rubber grip to go against the tarp on the ground or on the ground itself. Um, and then if you do feel the need to have to tie the end of it with the ropes, you bring it down and tie it to your tent stakes. These are in three pieces. These are your tops of your two poles. This goes up through the hole in your tarp. And in between, you have two extra lengths that you can put on each pole. So let's put one pole together. And I'm going to show you why I really like this. This is a spring lock. This slides up into the piece where you're putting it, and you can see it's notched. You twist it a little bit to get that in there, and then you push it in, and it holds it in there very snugly. So right now, I've got about four feet of pole. If I want my tent to lean, then I just take one of the bottom ones and I put this in and I have about six feet pole. If I want my tent higher, I add another joint pole to it. And then the bottom pole. And now I'm almost touching my ceiling is eight feet high. So I now have a seven foot pole and these poles are metal. Now, if you can hear this, these are metal poles. That's how easy and quick they go together. So there's one pole and there's your second pole. Now I'd be a little happier if they had given me the stakes. Um, I mean, to me, it just kind of makes sense that if you're putting up tent poles, you are going to have to tie them down and they give you the tie downs, but they don't give you the stakes. That's not a problem for me. I have plenty of stakes. I have stakes that came with something else that I had gotten that I wouldn't use um, for it. But uh, so I'll use that for this. As a matter of fact, I think I have them handy. I'll show you how simple they are. Oh, you know what? I'll do this little order. What the heck? Why not? Why not? Right? Let's do more. I only have six more orders coming. Let's do more. All right. Where is it? In with this. And I'm just going to pull the stakes out for now. So I can show you the stakes. And then I'll show you the rest of this. All right. I'm out. So I won't be using the stakes on this because this is going to be going underneath. It. So here's the stakes. And yes, they're plastic, but you know what? They got everything here in Arizona is sand. They'll still tap in fine, and then I can just wrap the cord around it. And so I'm just going to right now just put them right down in with the tent poles. And if I need to get better stakes, I have better stakes. I don't have to worry about that. So there's the tent poles. All right. <laughs> and those will probably fit in the bag with the actual tent, even though they're going to be used with the tarp. Now, this little thing, this was $5.97 in value. It's approximately four and a half feet by seven feet. And my tent is roughly six by six, somewhere along those lines. This comes with its own little carabiner attached to it so that you can hook it on wherever. You can take it with you if you want to. Nice little carry bag for it. And this is the little tarp. Now they advertise this as being like a beach tarp. It does have little tie downs if you do want to tie it down, but I don't need to. The tent's going to sit down on top of it with all my stuff in it. Well, non-food stuff. All that stuff in it and uh, the air, heavy air mattress in it. This isn't going to go anywhere once it's on the ground. So I don't need to tack it down. Uh, it's a, as I said, it's a decent size. It's parachute material. 
it's a thin tarp, but it's it's really, really nice material. I wouldn't want to lay on this if I was on the beach. Um, definitely not, because I don't really think that would be super, super comfortable. But yeah, it's pretty decent. I'm actually pleasantly surprised with it. And I will worry about folding it up and getting it back in the bag later. But it comes in different colors. Again, I didn't care about the color. For the price, it's worth it. It will go under the tent. If I don't need it under the tent, it will double as an extra mat down on the ground, wherever I might be sitting with Levi. Um, or I can use it as a sunshade. And I can add it on with a couple of carabiners to what I am going to use as a sunshade and extend my sunshade that much further, which is really good. Um, so yeah, I'm happy with that. Okay. Speaking of poles, let me grab a pole from up here. Okay. $2.96. Now, these are made for smaller poles, like what I have here, like the, the tech poles. This is not made for the big umbrella, the big, thick, two-inch umbrella that you have in your backyard. These won't go around it. These are light holders. These are little hooks. Your light hangs on here. Got my little light as an example. Your light hangs on here. This goes around the pole. You're supposed to fit these poles, so let's find out. Uh, they might. They might not. I don't know. Let's find out. They're going to be tight. Mm, maybe, maybe not. Oh, yep, there we go. Okay, because they are very tight, so you do have to work them on. If they sit on the pole. For me, I would be putting it on the top of the pole and not in the middle of the pole. And then you hang your light on here, and then you can turn on your light. Oops, sorry. Yeah, that's this is bright. <laughs> this is my in tent light that I, well, this is, no, this is my outside tent. Outside the tent light it has three different flashing, sorry, slow flashing, spotlight. For if I'm walking at night with Levi, that's part of my spotlight. And then it also over here, it has a USB port. This came from Timu. Ha ha. So that will hang up on the hook. There are four hooks. I only have two tent poles, but I got four because the deal for four of them was a better deal. It was it worked out to be where the price was good, the price was better. So for $2.96, just under $3, I got four of these pole hooks, lamp hooks, whatever you're going to call them. Up you go. <laughs> Up you go. Okay, onward. Do you ever trip over a tent cord in the dark? Oh, come on. Admit it. We all have. I have. Fluorescent green. And you can tell it's it's iridescent. That it's, this is glow-in-the-dark cord. Uh, it was $1.07. It doesn't tell me how much there is in it. But my plan is when I have the tent poles up and the cords coming down to the ground, I am going to just wrap this around that cord from the ground up partway on each side so that I can see where it is. Yeah, I can be a klutz. You should see my first aid kit that I have in here. And I don't want Levi tripping over it anyway, either. He's pretty smart. When he sees things that glow, he's pretty good. But yeah, glow in the dark, flying for tents. Ropes. Poles. Ah, oh, I need this back. I knew I should have kept it handy. All right. To go with this are these. This was $1.79, and I believe there's eight of them. Yep, eight pieces in here. I didn't care what color. I just got the cheapest color, and it happens to be red. So what you do with these, 
when you want to cinch up, I don't know, for those of you that camp, you probably already know this. You put your ears, get in there. All right. You put this through here and you make a knot. Not around it, but on one side of it. And I'll show you what I mean in a second. Okay. You make a knot. Just like that. What you then do is you wrap this cord through here and through here. So keep in mind now, this cord is going around your tent stake down here in the bottom. So you're going to have a double line. What this does is it locks on to that double line and it keeps it from sliding so that you can tighten up your rope. It doesn't work unless it's actually hooked on something. So you can tighten up your rope and not have it loosen out. You can pull this up and tighten it and it'll hold it where you tighten it. This is how you get good secure. So that's what that is for. There's eight of them. I don't anticipate having eight cords. I only anticipate needing the two, but you never know. I might have to put extra tie downs on the tent if it's windy when we go camping and I'll be able to use these on cord. Okay. Are we ready for more? A couple of more. Folding silicone cup. Now, this isn't just good for camping, guys. If you travel at all in your car and you're making stops, you can carry your own cup. If you have, if you're like me and you carry a pretty decent sized pocketbook, all right, you can carry your own cup. $3.51. Here's this little thing. That's your cup. Take your top off first. Now the top, this is really on there too. Hold on. The top is hard acrylic. It's hard plastic. This spill plug is soft acrylic. But the top itself is hard acrylic. So you've got your nice silicone spill proof locking lid and you've got your cup when you push your cup out you're going to find your middle band and this is hard plastic too like the top push your cup out all the way there's your cup this holds i believe 12 ounces <laughs> Let's see, 350 milliliters. It's about a cup, about 12 ounces. When you have your cup open, before you put anything in it, you put the ring on it. And the ring, you gotta push it up pretty good. The ring keeps the center from collapsing and it gives you hole spot to hold. So then you can just put your lid on. There you go. When you're ready, you don't have to take that little hard ring off. It'll pop down on its own. Just replace your lid, and that's it. There's your little tiny coffee cup. Going right into my camper's kitchen bag. That comes in a whole bunch of different colors. Greens, pinks, blues, whites. I think I saw one in gray, but shop because there are a lot of vendors selling the exact same thing. When you remember, when you find something that you like, take the, the description of it, the first line of description of it, and put that in the search bar and it'll bring you up a whole slew of vendors selling the same thing. They're very competitive with price. They don't make these products, right? They just sell them and ship them. So as long as they have good ratings for shipping if you check you know that there are whether it's five star four star ratings you check those you're not going to have a problem with the item all comes from the same manufacturer a dollar 46 my coffee bags now i told you all that i pre-make my coffee when i go camping and i make my 12 ounce bag and i put everything um we call pieces out of here and this is a six pack. There's six of these for $1.46. And I will probably make myself 
four cups of coffee, one for the night that I get there, one for the next morning, one for the following evening by the fire, and one for the final morning before uh, Levi and I head back home. So I'll make four cups of coffee. Here's your nice bag. They do open up on the bottom so that they will stand, so to speak. And I'll be able to put this into my little my little pot that I showed you that I have. This will this bends a little bit and it'll fit inside the pot so that it can warm. It comes with its own tiny little look at that. Look at that. Isn't that the coolest thing? A little funnel. All right. So you can pour in here. Now I know from experience you're not gonna pour anything in here. I use this funnel and then I take a bigger funnel and hold it over the top of this. I just set this down inside a tall glass when I'm filling it so that it holds it upright because trying to hold it upright, hold two funnels and pour, it's going to be a disaster. So I just set this inside a tumbler to let it hold it. It'll still fill, it doesn't matter, right? So once you get it done, you take off your little funnels. They all come with a cap. You can twist your cap on. Now, I'm not going to twist it really tight. You, if you twist it all the way, it becomes like one of those soda bottles that you have to snap the tap to get it over. Because if you can see, if you look around it, you see how it has this little edge, this breakaway piece? That breakaway piece, this is going to lock on to here when you screw it all the way down, which I will do once it's full, and then I put it in the freezer. I will lock it. All right, so... I'm going to fill this probably about three quarters of the way. I'll make my standard cup of coffee, pour it into the bag, right? let it cool, cap it, stick it in the freezer. So this cap will go on as tight as I can get it locked on. And then when I take it off, it'll be like a regular twist top because it'll have sealed it. These can take hot or cold. I'm also going to use, because it's a six pack, I'm also going to use a couple of them. Uh, probably just to put um, either regular ice water in, or I might use a couple of them to put milk in because I'm a big milk drinker, and uh, it might it might do me well to have a couple of extra containers of milk because I drink it all day long, all day long. So there's the bags. These are the biggest ones they make. These are the 500 milliliters. So that's the biggest one they do. But when you're a big coffee drinker, you need big containers, right? All right, hold on. One more thing. Now, I haven't explored this yet. $2.73. This is a selfie stick. Never have I ever, until now, had a selfie stick. Never thought I'd need one. But then I realized, oh, Oh, and it's lighting up. Can you see it lit, lit inside the bag? Um, turn it off. Off, off, off. Hey, turn it off. There we go. <laughs> I didn't, you must have gotten bumped and turned on. Okay, so, well, now you saw it's a selfie stick that comes with a light. Here's your selfie stick. You can turn your camera. So it's up and down, or it's your camera so it's horizontal. You can adjust this and lock it in like typical selfie sticks. This one expands to about a total of not quite 24 inches, 22, 24 inches. And you see this little tab here? I'm not going to pull that tab till I'm ready to use it because this is a little mini remote control. That little mini remote control. I will link this to my camera. And when I push the button, it'll take a picture without me having to reach up. Now, when I'm doing videos, as my plan, not to use this for still pictures when we're camping, but if Levi and I are walking and I'm taking videos uh, as we're walking, then this is how I'll use it. Now, there's your clamps to lock it in. This is a night light or a backlight. Your backlight just fits right over the top like that. It does not interfere whatsoever with the clamp. You can see there's the clamps. It sits above on here. 
There's a little button. Watch your eyes. Turn to non. I'm pressing it twice, turns it off. The light is USB rechargeable, and I have it fully charged in case I want to do any night recording. All right, but this will shine on my face while I'm walking with Levi or whatever. I'll have the light. Eh. In the dark, I'm supposed to be a lot brighter, but in here, it doesn't really matter much. So it comes with the light. You don't necessarily need it. And it's a tripod. So if I want to set this thing up on the selfie stick, whether it be short like this on the tabletop, or if I want to extend it all the way and have it setting up someplace so it can watch me, I might use this when I'm setting up camp. So you guys can see what I go through. Uh-oh, I'm going to sneeze. Hold on. Okay, change this mind. So I'm going to have a lot of fun playing with this because I never have I ever. And I love that the handle, but the, the tripod snaps closed. So they're not flopping around. You actually have to pull it and unsnap it to get them to open. So they do snap down nice and tight. It's a good grip for your hand. Your remote button is right there. Telescopes to all different lengths, folds different ways. And when you're not using it, this folds completely down. Hold on, gotta fold those little tab. Folds completely over. That's all the space it takes. With this on it, that's all the space it takes, even with that on it. So I will be playing with this. Um, I've got some stuff to do while camping, which I'm really thrilled at. I'm going to go exploring and make a video, a tape of what's going on around the camping corner, so to speak, what's going on, because I know a lot of you guys are excited for me to go and uh, looking forward to getting some information on when I do go. So I'll make sure that you get all that. Now, what's going on around the corner? Well, just around the corner. Yesterday was a very hectic, busy day. I was so wired that when I tried to go to bed last night, number one, it wasn't even in my own bedroom. It was here, but it wasn't in my own bedroom. I couldn't get to sleep. I was still awake at five o'clock this morning. I finally fell asleep a little after five and I got up about 8.30. <laughs> so if I sound a little weird, it's because I'm sleep talking. Anyway, what happened yesterday? Monday, I had people coming over like crazy, giving me estimates on the floorings because the only thing stopping this house from being put, in on the, being put on the market was I had three floors left to do. Yesterday morning at five minutes to nine, the carpet installer showed up. Monday night, after I had chosen my installer, I spent all of Monday night myself moving all the bedroom furniture out of the master bedroom. We're talking a six foot, 200 pound dresser, a Queen Anne's desk, a smaller, a, a four, almost five foot cabinet that was underneath my TV, my big TV, my chest at the end of the bed, nightstand. And then of course I figured, well, I'll take the bed out yesterday morning. So I, I slept in the empty room, but I taken everything out and stuffed it in the guest room and in the kitchen. Couldn't get into the kitchen. So yesterday morning they called, he called when he was on his way. It was about quarter after eight. He said, I'll be there within 45 minutes. So I said, okay, now I got to take the bed down. Got the mattress out, everything else out of the way. Have I have a big, heavy headboard. I'll put a picture up here so you can see. Really heavy, solid wood uh, maple head and footboard. It's like a sleigh bed. When I was taking the side rails off, the headboard got away from me, so to speak, because you have to hold it with one hand or the other. And the headboard jumped when I grabbed the rail. The headboard popped up and it came down right on the big toe on my left foot. It broke my toe and it took out a big hunk of flesh. Okay, no pain, no gain, right? Wrapped it up, moved the furniture out, sat down, put some ice on it, said, I can't do a dang thing about it. You can't ever do anything for a broken toe other than tape it to the toe next to it for stability. 
Well, I can't do that with a big toe because how am I going to wear my flip-flops? And my toe is too swollen to get into a regular shoe. So I just taped the toe itself to keep it from bending and to keep it stable for a while. You can feel the break in it. You can feel like a little chip in it. But yeah, it's and it's pretty swollen. <laughs> um, so that was how the day started. The installer came in less than two hours working alone. He had the entire floor taken from the bare cement slab to a beautiful, beautiful carpet. And I'll put a picture up so you can see the carpeting now. Absolutely gorgeous. I, I picked the right color out. I obviously picked out the right installers. They gave me the great price and a senior discount, which was nice. So I'm really happy with that. So by the time he left yesterday... My toe, as you can imagine, was seriously throbbing, but I'm like, oops, I have no place to sleep. So I started putting the clothes back in the closet and I started moving a couple of things, a, a small dresser and nightstands and lamps and everything else back in there, out of the guest room and into there. But I just did not have it in me to move a queen size mattress again by myself with the way my toe was feeling. And my energy was like, you know, <laughs> totally tapped out uh, or towed out as the case may be. So I slept in the guest room. I managed to clear a space so I could get to mom's, what I was mom's room. Um, I slept in her bed and it, though the bed was comfortable, it was a strange room to me. It just didn't feel the same. I wasn't used to it and I couldn't get to sleep. So I tossed and turned and I was up and down and so was Levi. He couldn't get to sleep in that room either. Probably taking his cue off of me, but because he can sleep through anything. So that was yesterday. Today, I have to prepare for what's around the corner tomorrow. Tomorrow, the installer is coming to put ceramic tile in my hallway, my center hallway, and tile in my living room floor. Uh, it's going to spend two days because the living room itself is like 18 by 14, it's or 19 by 14. It's a good size room. This well, you've seen all the different corners I've been in here. And there's a lot of furniture in here, which we're gonna have to move to one side of the room and back to the other because we just have no place to put it. So today I'm taking it easy on my foot. I did finish I, I got the queen mattress back in the master bedroom so I can sleep in there tonight. I got the bed made, but I didn't put any personal stuff up in there. I purged it, the room is staged for showing. All I'm gonna do in there is sleep. Um, so that's about it. I managed to get a few things, you know, out of the way, working on this video. Um, and then the other thing that I have to get done today, my last thing to have to do today is I have to go into the hallway and I have to pop off all the baseboard that's around the floor because the baseboard goes on top of the tile after the tile is laid. So I have to get that baseboard off. If I have him do it, He's going to charge me extra. And you know, it, it's all about saving the money and doing the work. So later this afternoon, I'll have to get down on my knees, crawl around the floor and pop off. Fortunately, it's not a big hall. It's only like six by six, but it's got a lot of little corners, little pieces. I'm going to have to number on the back. Piece one, two, three, four, five, probably got 20 pieces. So that's what's going on around the corner. New carpeting in the master bedroom was done yesterday. Broken toe happened the night before. Broken toe is going to take a couple of weeks before it's 100%, um, especially because I'm not taking any time off because of it. New tile coming in tomorrow. Next week, my real estate agent is going to come and do a walkthrough and let me know what I have to purge. In other words, what, what I have to take down that he thinks is too personal. Uh, he's going to help me. I, I The way I'm doing this to declutter and downsize is I'm making three piles. It's things I'm going to keep, obviously, and it's not a pile. Things I'm going to sell in the garage sale. Things I'm going to donate uh, that maybe don't sell in the garage sale or maybe I just, you know, want to donate. When I say sell, I put things up on Marketplace and Nextdoor app and whatnot. So things I'm selling, things for the garage sale and or later on donate, and the things that are trash. So those are my three piles. And everything that doesn't fit in those three piles is stuff I'm going to keep. And then I'm going to try to purge two rooms a week. Um, and I've already pretty much got the master done except for the closet. I have to do the closet. 
So yeah, I have a lot of purging to do. I've already put out a lot of trash. I've already put out a lot of stuff. That's another thing I did this morning. I put a couple listings up on, I don't know, five or six items, maybe more on both Marketplace and on uh, the Nextdoor app. So I'm getting things up. I have a lot of furniture to get rid of. I have an entire second bedroom set to get rid of. A queen size bed, two dressers, two nightstands, two lamps, a big mirror, a 35 inch flat screen TV. So if you know anybody who lives in Arizona, send them my way to come and pick it up because <laughs> the prices are unbelievably cheap. I just got to get rid of it. If I can't sell it, I'll leave it for the homeowner or I'll donate it and have one of the local charities come in and pick the stuff up to get it out of the house. But whew, so that's what's going on around the corner. What do you think? It's a lot. I know. Anyway, enough is enough. Oh my gosh, we're at an hour. I'm sorry. Let's see what happens. We get carried away when we get together, don't we? Big thumbs up if you like this, if you learned anything from it, if you're enjoying a little bit about the new segment uh, called uh, Just Around the Corner. Make sure that you share, get this out so everybody else can see it. If you're not yet subscribed to my channel, as Mama would say, do it now. Because we are well on our way to 3,100. We well, very quickly in a few days, surpass that 3,000 uh, 3, subscriber mark. I want to hit that 5,000 subscriber mark before I have to move out of this house so that when I, before I move, I can send out that goodie bag. Goodie bag's got close to 30 items in it. I'll do a video again when we get to that, right before we get to that 5,000 mark, maybe at like 4,700, 4,800. I'll do another video so that y'all can see what's in there. But yeah. You got to, you know, and only my subscriber. You have to be a subscriber to win. Subscription's free. It just means you're going to follow my channel. So hit the subscription button, hit that notification bell so that you know every time a video comes out, whether it's me by myself or Sunday with Mama on Sundays. We don't know how many more of those we're going to have. Mama's 95, right? So let's take advantage of enjoying the time with her and let's get as many eyes on her. She loves it. She's a ham for the cam. Guys, stay hydrated. Above all else, please stay sweet. Thank you so much for those who found me at Buy Me A Coffee, Connie's Little Corner at Buy Me A Coffee. Some of the orders I am coming are because of you. Those funds went to get uh, more orders and things that are household and different things that I'll be doing just around the corner. <laughs>